My first question to Jake today was with all of the intel that he has about this draft, what is the most likely scenario for the Kings at number four tomorrow night? At this point in time, I'm working under the assumption that the most likely result is Sacramento stays at number four. They're definitely still fielding trade calls. I wrote at Bleacher Report on Tuesday um, that a lot of people on the league, I mean, pretty much everyone I've talked to is working with the idea that the Kings will not make a deal until they are on the clock. So it's going to come down to the final seconds, um, and, and they're going to weigh as many offers as they can until they get to that point. Um, but they're, they're, it could be a negotiating tactic. They're definitely telling teams on the league that they're comfortable staying there. Um, so I'm t- I'm, that's the data point I can bring to you right now to make it seem like what's the likeliest outcome, I guess. Most of the chatter when it comes to that four pick and whether they, they, they were to trade out of it or, or draft somebody other than Jaden Ivey, I think people look at that and, and they think that it's either because Ivey doesn't want to be here or maybe it's a bad fit because of some positional redundancy. Is it clear cut to you that Jaden Ivey is, is the fourth best player? If you were just taking best player available, that he's the fourth best player in this, in this, in this draft to be taken at that spot? But to be honest, I haven't watched these guys a ton compared to how much I used to do back when I was at Sports Illustrated and I was on the night desk a lot. I used to watch late night Pac-12 games and all that. Um, I do personally think from my very limited sample size that Ivy is the higher upside prospect in terms of athletic profile and what have you. Um, a lot of teams I've spoken to seem to agree with that. But there are teams out there like Indiana – and San Antonio, who I've been told repeatedly from people I trust around the league that when those teams have called up to number four, that they are searching for Keegan Ivey, not or, or Keegan Murray, excuse me, not <laughs> Jaden Ivey. Um, so I do think, I think I, this is a total guess, but I would say from educated, from an educated standpoint, I would think maybe two thirds of the teams in the league think that Ivy is the the better prospect, but I do think uh, maybe even more than a third think it could be Keegan. So it doesn't seem like a, like a clear home run that Ivy is considered the the fourth best prospect in this class. Jake Fisher is with us here. Cattles and Rami, uh, Sacktown Sports 1140. Jake is from Bleach Report, also the author of uh, Built to Lose. With all of that said, Jake, if the Kings do sit at four, Rami mentioned all the smoke that's been thrown around Ivy. When it comes down to it, Jake, if the Kings are sitting there at four, do they actually bypass Ivy or do they take the guy? To me, knowing that making the playoffs is the ultimate goal of the Kings next year, I would think that Keegan Murray is the piece that's considered to be the more NBA ready, who has an obvious fit between De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. I know there's been talk about, you know, oh, maybe that's who ownership wants versus the front office wants Ivy. I don't know if that's true or not, but from everything I've heard, I really do think that Keegan Murray would be the pick at four for Sacramento if they stay there. I, I think he's the piece that moves them closer to their ultimate organizational goal of making the playoffs. Jake, I'm I'm the new kid in class. In, ca- in case you haven't heard, this is this is it used to be the Nick Cattles show. Now it's the Cattles and Rami show, and I've been you know cramming Kings content and trying to trying to catch up on what this team is up to. And I told the guys this morning in our in our group chat, it seems to me like the smoke signals that I'm picking up. It seems to me that the Kings are more interested in in doing this and in, in getting back to a a, a a a competitive state or like you said getting to the playoffs this year they're more concerned with doing this fast than they are doing it right is that a fair assessment on my behalf um not necessarily i don't think they're trying to cut any corners i think they've got a two-time all-star in demontis a bonus they've got a point guard in De'Aaron fox who they believe has shown all-star potential in the past and they're been out of the postseason for, you know, 15, 16 years now, whatever the, the full number is, it's hard to keep track. Um, <laughs> it's, I will confirm Jake. It's 16. It's, it's 16 straight. 
Yeah, so I think that it's only natural for them to try to find a piece that helps them move along. I don't think taking Keegan Murray, for example, over Jaden Ivey is like doing something that is trying to expedite anything, you know, to an aggressive degree. I think it's just, you know, that, you know, you don't want to be, unless you're OKC with a, with an idea of being there for a couple of years, you know, most teams in the top of the lottery aren't trying to be there year after year after year. Right. So um, it does seem like, taking a player with a goal of getting better is a common thing across several teams, not just what you know Sacramento was trying to do to cut corners. Jake Fisher is with us here. Cattles and Rami, Sacktown Sports, 1140. All right, let's get into one of the names that you wrote about. Let's, let's move on from the prospects and look at John Collins. You wrote about John Collins yesterday. Uh, seems like he could be gone. Jake, first question. I have two, two questions for you on John Collins. The first one is, uh, would, are the Kings – what's the likelihood that John Collins could be a King by tomorrow night? So I've got another notebook coming out at Bleacher Report tomorrow. I am worried that John Collins is going to get traded before tomorrow morning because <laughs> it really does seem like the Hawks have a clear goal of moving him before the draft. So – I've got a nice little lead item ready to go with John Collins in it. And, you know, everything I've been told is suggesting that there's a really strong chance he does get moved tonight. He does get moved before my story comes out. So could that be to Sacramento? They, they're they definitely one of the teams he's been linked to the most. Um, I do know and wrote in that article on Tuesday that um, they had conversations about him back at the deadline. Um, so the Kings do seem to be a viable landing spot. Um, he's come up in talks with Utah, I believe, for Rudy Gobert. Um, I've heard something about San Antonio there. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see where he actually does end up because as much as Atlanta is trying to move him before the draft, there's also skepticism that will happen from other teams I've, ta- I've talked to. So. Um, just because they have that time crunch and they have that clock to try to make it happen with doesn't mean it actually will um, get done before Thursday night kicks off. Short follow-up to that, Jake. Would they have to, would the Kings have to include the fourth pick in that possible deal for Collins? I don't think so, and I've been told that they will not. Interesting. Or at least that's their negotiating standpoint right now. Any chance of a surprise in the top three and one of those guys that they that, that have, have been put out there as the clear-cut top three slips to the Kings? It's certainly possible. I don't, I'm not expecting it, but that's also another scenario why Sacramento is not going to trade that fourth pick before the draft starts. Because in that scenario, like let's say it's Chet Holmgren, right? Let's say for whatever reason, OKC and the rumors of them liking Jade and Ivy are real and they take him number two. Houston scoops up Powell at three as they've been, you know, projecting pretty loudly they want to do. If that leaves Chet Holmgren at four, then all of a sudden the Kings trade offers are going to include not just teams that want Jaden Ivey or teams that might want Keegan Murray, but also teams that want Chet Holmgren. So the, in theory, their offers are only going to get richer. Um, it's not something that I think teams are really expecting, but everyone is preparing for that scenario to at least, happen um and it's certainly a factor in why sacramento probably won't make a deal until they're on the clock one more for you jake got about a minute left here uh ju- just a a non-kings question i know you wrote about kyrie irving yesterday what happens with kyrie what happens with the net so what's the intel and, and how do you feel from a gut uh, reaction listening to all of this and trying to figure it out you know, from the people i've talked around that situation now, the sense I've always gotten is that Kyrie is almost certainly going to end up back in Brooklyn. They just have some work to do, and I think that's going to be meeting on, on salary and on years and on incentives, like games played and stuff like that. Um, but also, I mean, there's really not a big market out there for Kyrie. Like, there just isn't. I know in the article in The Athletic on Monday – um, they pointed to the Lakers and the Knicks and the Clippers as logical teams that are, but would are to be expected to emerge if Kyrie is on the open market. Just does not seem like a real likelihood for the Lakers to make a trade there. 
The Clippers, I think, have other ideas in mind. And the Knicks, you know, they're more dead set on, on trying to go chase Jalen Brunson right now. Um, and I think that ultimately then if that didn't work out, the Knicks pivot point would be to Malcolm Brogdon um, uh, from Indiana. So I really think all these options that Kyrie thinks he has might not really be that legitimate. His name is Jake Fisher. He's one of the best in the business. He's with Bleacher Report. He is also the author of Built to Lose. Jake, can't thank you enough for the time. I know you're a very busy man. Let's do this again soon, though. It was fun. I appreciate you. You got it, guys. Thank you. All right. So there's uh, Jake Fisher again. That was uh, earlier today. That's why he was not asked.